Hey guys, welcome to the Bath Biz and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French Smith, and today we're going to talk about bath bomb colorants. So, we've had a lot of questions over lakes, micas, dyes, which should you use, which is the best application for which type. And so, I wanted to make a video that kind of briefly goes over each type of colorant and explains how they're used and kind of goes over the pros and cons of them. First, we're gonna start off with micas. Now, I think a lot of people begin their bath bomb coloring journey with micas because they're low cost, they're kind of cheap. Uh, I think this package is about five or six dollars. They're easy to get your hands on, they're easy to use. You just scoop it and add it to your mix. So here are the pros and cons of using mica. Um, it's pretty low cost. Like I said, this package was probably five or six dollars. Micas tend to be color fast. Um, so if I add it to a bath bomb, it may fade a little bit, but it's not gonna fade a ton. And they add shimmer to the water or they can add shimmer to the water, which is really pretty. There are some things about micas though that you should be aware of. Um, you need to use polysorbate 80 if you're using mica. If you don't use some kind of emulsifier, then mica will stick to the side of your tub and it will create a huge mess. So you have to be really careful with that. You need to use polysorbate 80 or an emulsifier of your choice, but make sure that you test it because sometimes, even if you use polysorbate 80, it can still create a mess, it can still stain, um, and it can create a lot of residue in the bathtub. So my experience is that mica always creates residue. I have never been able to make a bath bomb with it where it didn't leave at least some residue. Now there are makers out there who will tell you that that's not true, that they can make bath bombs with mica and it doesn't leave any residue, and that is awesome. So I'm really glad for those people. I can only speak to my experience though, and my experience is that even if I include mica as a shimmer agent, it still leaves residue in the bathtub, which is fine as long as they have polysorate 80 in there. And I let my customers know that they're probably gonna have to rinse the tub out, but they won't have to clean it, okay? They can just get a cup of water, rinse it out, they're done. Um, but it, that is a reality or a fact about using micas. The other thing about micas is that if you're using it as the main colorant for your bath bomb, you're gonna need to use a lot like a lot, a lot. And so that kind of means that the cost factor of this doesn't really stand up in the end because this one ounce, I might have to use a whole tablespoon of that. And that's a lot. Um, the other thing about micas though that you should be aware of is that you don't need a BAT certification for them. They are not natural. I wouldn't consider them natural, okay? So nobody mined this out of the earth, okay? The stone maybe was mined out of the earth and the colorants that are added to it are considered natural colorants, um, titanium dioxide and iron oxide. So together those are natural colorants, but I wouldn't consider mica necessarily a natural colorant. So sometimes people are trying to stay all natural with their bath bombs, which is a very subjective term anyway, and I try to stay away from that, but I'm just letting you know that it's, I wouldn't really consider it natural. So that's just something to be aware of, but because um, it's a mica, it doesn't require batch certification. And the reason that's important is because next we're gonna talk about lakes and dyes. So lakes and dyes are colorants that do need to be batch certified if you're gonna sell in the United States. Um, this, they are FD&C, so that's Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Certified Colorants. And so getting a certified color can be a little bit more expensive. If you're just starting out and you're a hobbyist, you don't need to worry about batch certification. If you do want to sell your products, then batch certification is really important. So it's just a little clarification on that. You don't have to have a batch certification if you're a hobbyist, but if you're going to sell, you do need to have a batch certification. Um, first, we'll talk about dyes. So this is a really small container of dyes. This is 10 grams of dye. Um, this is actually purple, even though it looks red. So right out the gate, we can see that dyes are a little bit different. What you see is not necessarily what you get with a dye. Um, but let's go over the pros and cons in an organized manner so you don't 
be confused with me. So here are some of the pros of dyes. A little goes a long way. They are super concentrated, very pure colorants, and so a very tiny amount goes a long way. And I, when I say a tiny amount, I mean like a micro scoop, 15 cc's, might be enough to color a full batch, kind of depending on how bright or vibrant you want the color to be. So a little goes a long way. Um, and like I said, they are super concentrated, but they're also water soluble. So if I just dump some of this colorant into a cup of water, um, the color is going to open up in the water and it's gonna be beautiful and you're gonna see what color you are getting. You also, because it's water soluble, it means that you don't have to use polysorbate 80 in your recipe. Now, I suggest using polysorbate 80 in your bath bomb recipe, no matter what your coloring, because it's gonna help the oils disperse in your bath bomb. But I know that some people are opposed to using it. And so if you absolutely don't wanna use polysorbate 80 or an emulsifier of any kind, then a dye might be a good choice for you because it's water soluble. Um, you don't need the polysorbate 80 in it, okay? And like I said, you only need a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. The thing about dyes though, is they are significantly more expensive, especially if you get the batch certified ones, they're expensive, okay? But it is an investment. Like I said, a little goes a long way. So you can say, okay, this is an investment. This is gonna last me a long time. And that's fine, it's totally worth it. For me, I just use dyes for my embeds. So I don't mind the cost of them because I'm really only using them for a small amount of the cost of my bath bombs. But that is something to take into consideration. They are a little bit more expensive to use, uh, to purchase. Um, there's also kind of a significant learning curve, I feel, when it comes to dyes because, you know, this is purple. What you see is not necessarily what you get and you have to bloom dyes. So blooming means that you add some water to the dye and then you add that watery dye mix into your baking soda and you let that mix and mix and mix until the color is thoroughly saturated into the baking soda and then it has to dry um, fully before you can use that baking soda in your bath bomb. So, that can be really risky for some people. Number one, it's time. They have to prepare ahead of time. Um, they have to take the chance that the dye uh, is not gonna turn out to be the color combination that they wanted. And so that's just something to take into consideration. So what you see is not necessarily what you get because say you've bloomed your dye and you add your citric acid to it, oh no. <sighs> Dyes are also pH sensitive. So when you add that citric acid into your baking soda, sometimes you get a color change that you didn't expect. Sometimes it'll morph and go back. Sometimes it stays there. So it's really, there's just a lot of learning that's involved with dyes. And it's just not something that I suggest, especially if you're first starting out. But like I said, some people love them and they use them all the time and they love them. Um, the other thing about dyes is that they can bleed. So if you really want your color separation in your bath bomb to be really distinct, sometimes you're not gonna get that. The colors can bleed into each other and so that can be problematic. Um, and then probably the most important thing, at least for me, is that dyes are UV sensitive, which means that um, they fade really quickly once they are in sunlight and even honestly, um, in your house or store, wherever you're, you're selling your bath bombs um, or storing them, even that small amount of light can cause them to fade. Now, the good thing is that even if a bath bomb is faded, you still get that beautiful color payout. So it doesn't affect the end color of the bath bomb, but if the design of the bath bomb was dependent on the color of the dye and it fades, it can be really disappointing, especially when somebody is just starting out. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can combine dyes with um, micas to help stabilize the color. So that's something that you can do and take into consideration. But then at that point, you have to add polysorbate 80 to your mix. So it's just, um, it's just something that you're going to have to look at for yourself and see what, you know, weigh it for yourself and see what you think. The next colorant that we're going to talk about are lakes. Now, lakes like this red 40 that I got from TKE. 
they can be batch certified or not batch certified. Um, but like dyes, if you're gonna sell them uh, your bath bombs in the US, then they do need to be batch certified. Um, TKB, where I got this red 40 from, they have some that are certified and some that aren't certified. So you could get a red 40, like this one is not certified. So, um, and then I have some that are certified. So if I'm testing or if I'm just making for family or friends, I can use this one. And then if I need to sell it, I can use the other batch certified um, lakes that I have. One of the great things about lakes is that you can just add them straight into your bath bomb mix. You don't need to bloom them at all. You can just put them right in there and what you see is what you get. So if I put this into my bath bomb mix, I'm gonna get red. Um, now I may need to tweak that color a little bit, but this is red. This is always gonna be red. It's not like this dye that looks red, but is actually purple. So with lakes, what you see is what you get. You also, like I said, you don't need to bloom your lakes, um, but they are oil dispersible. So they don't necessarily solubilize in the water. So they're, unless you include an emulsification agent like polysorbate 80, they are not going to spread out into the water. But if you do use polysorbate 80 and include it with your oils, um, these will bloom into your water and you'll get a beautiful color payout because at the end of the day, these are dyes. They're just on a substrate or another, um, another material that stabilizes them. And then when you add them into your bath bombs, you don't need to do all the extra steps that you have to do with dyes. So that is kind of nice. But like I said, you do have to use polysorbate 80 with them. Um, lakes also tend to be a lot more color fast. You may experience some fading with them, but it's significantly less than you will get with dyes. Okay, so if you're gonna be selling outside, um, if you're gonna be, you know, uh, having your bath bombs in an area where they might have exposure to sunlight, then lakes might be a great option for you. Um, some of the cons with lakes are, like I said, you have to use polysorbate 80 with them. Um, you also have to use more. You have to use more of the colorant than you have to use with the dyes, but the cost of them is lower. So it does kind of balance out. So, and then, like I said, sometimes they do still fade. So those are all things to take into consideration. So now let's look at some ways you can use lakes and dyes and micas in your bath bombs. Okay guys, so the first thing that we are going to look at um, is what happens if you combine these colorants with just water. So in that first cup, um, that's a really pretty blue color, I have dye and it's just been combined with water and I skipped that step because I'm gonna do it again on the next uh, section. In this second cup, I have a lake colorant and I just put a little bit of that lake colorant into a cup of water with no emulsifier, no oil, nothing like that to help it combine. And as you can see, it does color the water just a little bit because a lake is a, uh, a lake is a colorant that has been sprayed with dye. So it does have dye in it. So that's why the water is colored blue. But like I talked about earlier, it has insoluble um, material in it that won't dissolve into the water and that's what you see kind of clumping up on the bottom. The second, no, the third cup, um, I'm gonna use some blue mica and just put it in there. No oil, no uh, polysorbate, nothing to help it emulsify. I'm just gonna put it in there. You can see maybe teeny tiny particles of it are falling down. Um, into the cup, but it is not going to voluntarily mix into the water. So we're gonna stir it. And right away, you can see the really pretty shimmer effect that people are so drawn to when it comes to micas and bath bombs. But wowie, look at that film and nasty on top of the water. Look at that film on my little um, spatula. It is covered with stuff. And yes, the mica is floating in the water. Yes, it looks pretty, but it would not be a fun thing to have your body in <laughs> at all. Like, at all in all. And just to prove it to you, 
I'm just going to go ahead and stick my hand in there because why not? So if you were taking a bath with a bath bomb that had mica and it didn't have polystyrene 80 in it, you would get that all over your skin. It would be really annoying to clean up because trust me, even cleaning up my hand was annoying. Okay, so now we're going to do it again and we're going to add them correctly. So here we go. We're about to have a real moment here. I get flashbacks to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire because hashtag I'm a Potterhead. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you can see how beautiful the dye looks when it um, is comes into contact with the water. You don't need anything extra to get them to, uh, you know, be together. They just want to be, they're Romeo and Juliet. They just want to be together, okay? Um, so they're really easy to mix together. Now a tiny, I mean, you saw like a tiny, tiny bit that I put in there and it goes a long way. It makes that beautiful deep blue. In this little cup, I have some polysorbate 80 and some oil that I just kind of eyeballed and threw in there together. And I'm gonna put some lake colorant in there. So um, the blue in the first cup was blue one dye and the blue in the second cup is blue one lake. And I'm gonna kind of give that a stir to mix those all together. Um, and now I'm gonna pour that into the water. And as you can see, it doesn't want to immediately uh, combine. It needs a little bit of encouragement in the form of stirring. In your bath bomb, you won't really have to stir it. Your bath bomb is gonna be fizzing and foaming and helping to disperse it. So you don't really need to stir it or anything like that. As long as you use polysorbate 80, you will be fine. Um, now we have significantly more mica. So we have mica, some oil, and some polysorbate 80, and we're gonna stir those together. This is the same mica from the first section of the video, Blue Vibrance from Nurture Soap. There's a very specific reason that I picked blue mica to talk to you guys about because it was one thing that I didn't mention in the first parts of the video, and that is that blue mica, oh pretty, wow, look, everybody loves mica. Um, that is um, that blues and green micas tend to have an ingredient called chromium green oxide or ultramarine blue, um, and it should not be used in bath bombs. So if you have a mica that says that it's safe for using in bath bombs, but it has either of those ingredients, then the manufacturer has mislabeled it and it is not safe to use. Um, and that was one of the reasons I specifically picked blue <laughs> to remind myself to talk about that. Um, because it is important. One of the reasons is not just to be a stickler, but also because um, it will smell like God. It will smell like a rotten egg. So it creates like this really disgusting sulfur smell. Here I am going like 2000 miles a minute, making three identical mini batches. The first batch had 0.5 grams of dye. I write five grams of dye later. <laughs> when I was doing the math on it, I was like, holy hell, that is not right. So no, it is not right. Um, it is 0.5 grams of dye. The other one has three quarter um, lake and this one, the bottom one has two tablespoons, two teaspoons, I apologize, two teaspoons of mica. So there are three versions of purple. And um, I did this because there was a couple reasons. First off, I wanted to show you guys what happens if you leave uh, a bath bomb that's been colored with lake dye or mica in the sun, because I did talk about them fading, but I wanted to show you specifically what happens when it fades and what it looks like. So that's part of the reason I did that. And then the other reason is that we're gonna be able to break this down and figure out how much colorant we need per gallon and part of the reason I did it this way was because when I was trying to find the, <laughs> I was trying to find how many gallons of water are in a bathtub. And I found everything from 30 to 80 gallons of water, which makes a heckin' huge difference. So one of the things you can do if you are trying to figure out how much colorant that you want to put into your bath bomb, like, okay, how much? of mica, do I need to get that shimmer effect? How much lake or um, dye do I need to get that effect? You can make a tiny batch. So those aren't actually embeds, even though they are the size of embeds. Those are actually just miniature bath bombs. So it's a bath bomb recipe. Um, and then I you know, weighed each batch and I know exactly how much they weigh. So then I could say, okay, to color one gallon, I need this many. So if you know how much a gallon, how many gallons you have in your bathtub, go for it. 
Um, I don't know how many gallons I have in my bathtub. So the other thing that you can do is you can just throw a couple in a bath and see how it does. So for me, three of those uh, little cubes was enough to color a bathtub with the dye. Um, the micas needed so much. Okay, so the first one was dyes. This one is lakes. And it does have polysorbate 80 in it. So you can see it's kind of creating some foam on the top. It's very pretty. Um, and then this is mica. And I use three cubes for this. So three cubes is enough to get that shimmer poo. Is that what people call it? Shimmer poo? There's also, uh, people call it, uh, what do they call it? Like shimmer lava or like lava effect? I don't know. Look, here's the deal. Three of these little cubes wasn't like two is maybe enough. Like two, you can kind of start to see it. Okay, so I was like, meh, maybe I'll go to three. Maybe I'll stop there. But I did three cubes with the other one. So I decided to do three with the mica too. So I put a third one in there and then, wow. Oh my gosh, look guys, look how pretty. It's very pretty. You do get the shimmer thing. Like I understand the draw, okay? I am not immune to that. I am an artist at heart and I like pretty things. So I'm not immune to that, but I'll show you what happens. So here they are. They were sitting in the sun uh, basically for like 10 hours. So this is the dye and you can see the side that wasn't in the sun and the side that was in the sun. Pretty drastic. Uh, this is the lake next and there is maybe a tiny bit of fading. There's a little bit of a difference in the color, but not anything like what you see with the dye. And then with the mica, I don't really think there's a color difference. It may be slightly because I want there to be, <laughs> but okay. So then I took a bath. 38, 39, 40. And I put the little embed cubes in and I, I, I did a bunch of math first. I did a bunch of math and I was like, my math can't be right because my math was saying that I would need all, all the little embed cubes to shimmer the bath up. And I was like, that can't be right. So I put in 15 first because I thought, I don't know, I thought I was smarter than the maths. But I think in the video, you can see it a little bit better, but like in the bathtub, you really couldn't see it. I honestly wasn't that impressed with it. Like. You could barely see it in the tub. Um, and I had to end up putting all the cubes, which I only had 45 cubes left because I made 50 originally. But look, look. Okay, so this is when I got out of the bathtub. And so now that I have some perspective, I can see the, sh the shimmer a little bit better. I'm just saying like when you're in the water, you can't really see it that well. So I don't know what to tell you, but it is pretty. But do I think that it's worth, Anna, do I think that it's worth this? No, no ma'am, I do not. I do not think, I do not think that it's worth that because here's the deal. <laughs> For me, I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure this will make a mess, but whatever, I'm aware of that. But what if this is your customer? And like, this is not my test tub, so it's not quite, you know, air quotes, it's not quite as clean as my test tub because this is my personal bathtub, but it's not filthy, it's not dirty. And I know that there are some makers who are like, oh, well the mica is only sticking to the soap scum that's on the side of your tub. And like, okay, great Becky, but like, how, wh what am I supposed to do about that? Like my tub is pretty darn clean and this is ridiculous. I do not, like the idea of having to clean my bathtub. I do not like the idea of having to give these to somebody and then having to tell them like, hey, make sure you have scrubbing bubbles on hand because it gonna stain. Like, I don't feel like that's an appropriate thing to tell my customers or my clients. Um, sorry, I'm just speaking my truth right now. And okay, so you makers who are out there who are saying that you can make bath bombs with mica and that it never ever stains and like you've never had that happen. I applaud you. Uh, you don't have to share your knowledge with me if you're not so inclined to do so. 
I'm just saying that my experience is that using mica is a pain in the ass and I've never had it not stain when it's used as the main body colorants for the bath bomb. That's just, that's just what I'm saying. So you are free, you are free to make your own choices. Maybe it's because it's purple. Maybe I just have, because you know the mica bath bomb that I did for the Wednesday was purple as well. So maybe I just have a problem with purples. And because I use polysorbate 80, it does come off pretty easily. So I'm not saying that it was like the same pain in the ass to clean as the other one, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that I don't like cleaning my bathtub. I definitely don't like taking a bath and knowing I'm gonna have to clean my bathtub. And while this didn't stain stain, like it's not deep set in stains, it, it stained it, okay? It let, look, I'm gonna point the little ghost of a line. I don't care if it's just a ghost, it weren't there before I started, you know what I'm saying? Guys, thank you so much for hanging in there with me um, this long. I really appreciate it. I hope that you were able to learn more about Micah's Lakes and Dyes and their applications in bath bombs. I know, I know I was not able to answer all of the questions that you likely had. Um, and hopefully at some point in the future, I'll be able to do a follow-up video. Um, it would be really nice if I was able to do a follow-up video on just dyes, just lakes, and just micas to really hone in on kind of some of the specifics of them. That's not something I have time to do um, in the near future, but it is a goal. So hopefully I'll be able to get around to that. I have some other big projects I'm working on, but um, it would be nice. I know I can definitely see that there was a lot of questions about uh, bath bomb colorants in our Facebook support group. And so there's definitely a need for that. And I recognize that. Um, in the meantime, you could always come visit number one, our Facebook support group, Bath Biz and Foam, Bath Bomb and Bubble Bar support group. We're a community of friendly, helpful makers, and we would love to help you out if you have questions and comments. And there are all kinds of really skilled uh, bath bomb makers in there. And there are people who are really good at things that I'm not that great at. So they may be able to help you. Like maybe they can tell you how to get mica to not stain in your bath. Um, I know one thing that I tend to do is I tend to use white mica if I'm gonna make a shimmer effect in a bathtub so that I don't, you know, if it does leave a residue or if it does stain, I don't have to deal with purple mica, it's white. And so I don't really see it. So there are some tips and tricks and hints and all kinds of things that obviously I wouldn't have time to go into on this video, but you know, I did the best I could. Um, so yeah, come join our Facebook support group. You could also come visit us at bathfizandfoam.com. We have free color studies, so we could help you uh, learn how to mix custom colors if that's something that you're interested in. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you wanna keep seeing our content. And as always, happy making. I love you. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Oh, shit. to figure out which uh, colorant you think is best for you um, based on the use that you want to like and subscribe to this video so we can keep getting you know youtube sends you things when we are updating you get it we get it you know mutual mutual i'm sure <laughs> so uh come join our facebook group bath is you can also come join our facebook group bath what is my company called? I will leave links in the description for 
our color studies that are free online and you can come look at that. That's it. <laughs>